in the same way I was with Moses, I will be with you. I won't give up on you. I won't leave you. Strength. Courage. You are going to lead us people to inherit the land that I promised to give the ancestors. Give it everything you have, heart and soul. Make sure you carry out the revelation that Moses commanded you. Every bit of it. Don't get off track, either left or right, so as to make sure you get to where you're going. And don't for a minute let this book of the Revelation be out of mind. Ponder and meditate on it day and night, making sure you practice everything written in it. Then you'll get where you're going. Then you'll succeed. Haven't I commanded you? Strength. Courage. Don't be timid. Don't get discouraged. God, your God, is with you every step you take. just for you. You can do that by WhatsApping hi to the number below or you can go to Information Central and just follow the options that speak on guest and that will take you to where you need to go so that you can make contact with us. So love you to lean in this morning to everything that we have in store for you. Kids, we haven't forgotten about you. There's a fantastic interactive program for you that happens right here on Facebook. If you want to get in touch with us, you can WhatsApp hi to the number on the screen below. You can go to Information Central or you can go to www.acitychurch.co.za. We'd love to make contact. So don't go away. I'll see you a little bit later on. Ethan, over to you again. Thank you everybody for tuning in every week and worshipping along with us. We've worked hard to change the format of worship to make it more inclusive and hopefully that you can worship along with us. 
So I want to encourage you, worship isn't just about singing songs, but it's communicating with God and taking time to reflect. So find a space that's comfortable or uncomfortable and worship along with us. Jesus, my hope, my eyes are fixed on you when storm winds blow and the dark night falls. You are the hope of all eternity. Your name is shield, your promise sure, and every knee shall and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, Lord of all, Lord of all. Jesus, my help, you'll never leave my side. In mountains high, in valleys low, King of all kings, 
My world is in your hands In you I'm safe Covered by peace And every knee shall bow And every tongue confess That Jesus Christ Jesus Christ is Lord, Lord of all, Lord of all. We have a living hope. We have a living hope in the name of the Lord. We have lived hope. We have lived in hope in the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. Every knee shall bow And every tongue confess That Jesus Christ is Lord Lord of all, Lord of all And every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord Lord of all Lord of all Thank you Ben and Ethan for another powerful praise and worship set. So appreciate what you do. So get ready now as we prepare ourselves for another powerful, authentic, life-changing preach from John, who is our lead pastor here at A City Church. Thank you, John. Hi, good morning, church, and welcome to this uh, session of Connections at 10, coming to you from our office at Hawfield Road, in Cape Town, welcome, and I'm trusting that God is going to do something great through His Word in your heart right now. So open up, don't close down, get ready, because God's about to do something absolutely powerful through His Word in your life here today, in Jesus' name. Let's get ready for this right here, right now. We all believe, guess what the Bible says? In Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That's God's message to the children of Israel who are finding themselves feeling rejected, who are finding themselves feeling that they are outcast. You know, the presence of God is not in their midst. The promises of God are not being fulfilled. The plans of God are not coming to fruition. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. We all believe that we are people of destiny. We all believe that God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. We all believe that God is leading us, regardless of where we find ourselves in the challenges of life. But that God's presence 
is prevailing, that God's presence is there, that God's presence is leading his power, his provision, and that he's leading us to a hope and a future. We all believe in destiny and living in destiny. And I want to help you to understand this morning what it means to living in destiny. And I want to preach a message titled, Abraham Believed God. Because when Abraham was faced with the challenges of life's journey, of being a person of destiny, of being a person who God had made a great promise to concerning his future, that when he was faced with the trials and tribulations that come with life, he chose to believe God rather than his circumstances. He chose to believe that God would provide. He chose to believe that God would lead him through and see to the fulfillment of the promises that he made. And you know what? In the midst of the challenge that we face here, we are called by Jesus. We are called by Jesus to salvation, but we are called to a hope and a future. We are called to a bigger future than what we had in the past because of what God has done through our, uh, in our lives through Jesus' death on the cross. We have a hope and a future, and God has a plan and a purpose for your life. But what happens when we're facing the trials? What happens when we're facing the challenge? When we believe God, when we dare to believe God, we will find, as Abram found, the fulfillment of the promises of God and the faithfulness of God every single step of the way, every single part of the journey that you're on, you're going to find the fulfillment of God's promise in your life. Walking in destiny and living in destiny. And so I want to preach this message titled, Abraham Believed God. Abraham Believed God. That's got to be your default. There's got to be a but default in your life. I'm facing Corona-19 virus. I may be actually facing the virus itself. But God, I choose to believe either the outcome of the virus or I choose to believe God. What does he say about my life? What does he say about my future? What does he say about my destiny? Child of God, are you ready for this? In James chapter 2 verse 23, the Bible says this about Abraham. James wrote this about Abraham. And we know that God's word, the scripture, is his God-breathed word to us. It's, it's under inspiration. It's inspired, fully inspired by God, every single part of it. And so you're taking this as the word of God today for your life. And we can learn from God's word in the most amazing way. And when we put God's word, when we dare to put God's word into practice in our lives, we will see the outworking of that time and time again in fulfillment. Never the opposite. We always see God's word fulfilled in your life, fulfilled in your life, fulfilled in your life. Because when God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. This is what James says about Abraham. It's a beautiful statement about Abraham. And that's where I get the message title from. Abraham believed God. That was his default. That's what got him into the hall of fame. That's what got him into the faith's hall of fame. Abraham believed God. And this is what it says. And so it happened, just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God and God counted him righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. Listen to how this verse starts. And that's why I say this was his default. Abram believed God. It was like this is his mission statement. Abram believed God. Look at what it says in, in the beginning of the verse. It says, and so it happened just as the scriptures say. In other words, in other words, and so it happened just as God had said to Abraham. And, and it happened just as God had said to you, just as God had promised Abraham, just as God had promised you, my friend. 
Abraham believed God. And because Abraham dared to believe God, just as God had promised him, it was counted to him as righteousness. In other words, he found salvation. In other words, he found God, the one who would lead him for the rest of his life, the one who would journey with him, the one who would take him from his today into the future, and that he knew that his future would have hope, his future would be attached with greater things, and that the journey that he would find himself on would be a journey where he would be in pursuit of God and the plans and the purposes of God for his life, because that's where his true fulfillment was met. In Romans chapter 4, verse 18, it also makes this statement about Abraham. So when God told Abraham that he would give him a son who would have many descendants and become a great nation, it says Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. There's the statement. God, he believed God. Okay, Abraham believed God, even though such a promise just couldn't come to pass. So he had received a word from God, but it tells us he received a promise from God. And when he received the promise from God, even though he knew it was impossible to be fulfilled, he believed God. Even so. He believed God. Though such a promise couldn't come to pass because he was looking at his circumstances. He was looking at who he was. He was looking at how old he was. He was looking at why God has appeared to me. Why God has called me. Why God has chosen me. When he was looking at the circumstances around his life, his age, you know, the fact that his wife, Sarah, was a barren woman. The fact that, hey, how am I going to become a father? How am I going to become a father of a multitude? My age, look at me. I'm not in a childbearing age. My wife's not in a childbearing age. This is going to be a problem. This is going to be huge. I can't do this. Even though he says, I believe God. I choose to believe God. Then in the hall of faith, this is what Abraham, it says about Abraham. This is what the scriptures say about Abraham. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. He went without knowing where he was going. You see, Abraham believed God. And we're going to unpack that in a moment. Abraham was convinced when he encountered God that moment in his life when God called him. He was convinced by faith about God's promise made over his life. Regardless of his circumstances, regardless of his age, regardless of where he found himself, even an outsider, even an outsider, he found God's favor on his life. And he was convinced about the promise God made him. That someday, regardless of how it would come about, that someday on this journey, God would bring it to fulfillment. And he would inherit the promise of God. He even left home not knowing where he was going to. That's an amazing story. It was by faith that Abram obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. Abram was convinced by faith about God's promise made to him of a place that he would someday receive as his inheritance. And he left home before knowing the location of that place that God would lead him to. Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. 
God. In fact, if you turn to Genesis chapter 12, reading from verse 1 to verse 4, you see the beginning of this journey unfolding. And I want to remind you, as we go into this, that Abraham is 75 years of age. He's 75 years of age when he departs from where he lived in Ur to the land that God would lead him to. 75 years of age, walking by God's design. Abram's journey to the promised land was a, a journey of faith. Abraham believed God. Listen to what it says. Now the Lord said to Abram, go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great and so you shall be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So Abram went forth as the Lord had spoken to him and Lot went with him. Now Abram was 75 years of age, 75 years of age when he departed from Haran in the earth of Chaldeans. Absolutely incredible. Abraham believed God. You see, that's the thing. When I was looking at it, I understand that you must go from in order to go to. You will never experience the fulfillment of the promise of God in your life unless you're willing to be like Abraham and believe God and go from Go from to go to. You have to have a go from in order to have a go to. You must be willing to leave behind in order to go ahead. You cannot do it any other way. That's the conviction. That's what you're convincing about God is all about. You see, destiny, Abraham's destiny lay in the future, not in the past. In the past, he was a farmer. His future, there was a question mark in it because he didn't understand it at the time. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't know what, what that land looked like. However, he went on the journey. You must be willing to leave behind to go ahead Destiny lies in the future, not in the past. Your destiny lies in the future, not in the past. Abraham understood that. He was convinced and that's why he went on the journey. Now the Lord said to Abraham, that's what it said. Notice that the Lord said to Abraham, that's his go-to. That's where Abraham believes God. That's his go-to. He received a word from God, the call of God to Abraham. The seed of God's word, the promise of God placed within him. This is for you, my friend. This is for you. God speaking to Abraham, I want you to go to this place. God spoke a word. Now the Lord said to Abraham, he received a word from God. And because he received a word from God, he was convinced that this was God. And he went on the journey. Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. His God-given purpose, his God-given destiny, his God-given dream was placed right there and right in that moment. And he dared to believe God. He dared to believe God. You've got to go forth from in order to go to there has to be a go from to go to. There must be a leave behind to go ahead. He says, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. And make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse. When you get there. And when you get there. He says, I'll make you, and, and I will make you. It's in other words, and when you get there, and when you get there, when you arrive at the promised land, he says, 
When you arrive at that destination's arrival gate, you will see the fulfillment of God's promise. And I will make you. That's the in-between. God's going, hey, listen, by the way, when you get there, there's going, and I will. And I will. Hey, when you get there, when you get there, you will see the fulfillment of God's promise. I will make you and I will bless you and I will make your name great. And so sh you shall be a blessing. And in you. And in you. Because there's a seed in you. Because not only have I given you a word, but I've put a seed inside of you. The seed of God's word is in you. And because God's put a word inside of you, that word has to f be fulfilled. It has to germinate. It's got to germinate in your life. It's got to come through you. It's not going to come through your next door neighbor. It's going to come through you. And in you, you carry in you the seed of God's promise. You carry in you. The word of God, you carry in you the provision of God. You carry in you. That's the power. That's why Abraham believed God. And all the families of earth will be blessed. My friend, your God-given purpose and destination is not for yourself fulfilling prophecy or yourself enriching prophecy but rather so that others may be brought to salvation through your obedience to God's word. All the families of the earth will be blessed. That's what God's promise to Abram was. I'm going to lead you to a land of promise. It's going to be a land that you will inherit, and it's a land that you're going to have your children as, as numerous as the stars in the sky, if you can count them. So blessed will your offspring be. <laughs> The seed of God's word in you, carrying it day in and day out, but it's for all the families, so that all the families of the earth will be blessed through you, because you're carrying that seed, waiting, the world is waiting for that seed to come out, it's waiting for that word to be fulfilled, it's waiting for you to respond, it's waiting for you to believe God, it's waiting for you to come out of the pandemic and trust God for a mighty move. That will break the power and catapult you into the future. It's waiting for you to believe God and dare to believe God. It's not for you. It's so that others can be released. Someone's waiting for a word from you. Someone's waiting for a touch from you. Someone's waiting for an encouragement from you. Waiting for you to step into the scene and bring about change. We're yet to make a difference. When we take people through growth training, know God, find freedom, discover purpose, make a difference. I know God so that I can find my freedom. I find freedom so I can discover my purpose. I discover my purpose so I can make a difference in this world. That's what it's all about. Abram understood that. I'm 75. My wife, it's impossible. She's a hundred years old by the time she has a baby. My goodness gracious. I dare to believe God. I dare to believe the seed that is planted deep within me to be released. You carry it inside your spirit and God has placed it in there. So Abram went forth. This speaks about an audacious face obedience to the plans and the purposes and the will of God. It's a radical face. It's audacious. Nothing stands in the way of it. Whether you find yourself in a drought, whether you find yourself you know, having to, to, to literally sacrifice your firstborn son and then you stop right at the altar. Because God says, I just wanted to check, test your obedience. Even in the midst of challenge after challenge after challenge, I dare to believe God. Abraham believed God as the Lord had spoken to him in accordance with God's word, in accordance with God's dream, in accordance with the seed that God had placed within him, in accordance with. According to God's word, 
Abraham believed God and the Lord as the Lord had spoken. Regardless of the fact that he was 75 years of age. I want to say this to you. When God puts the spirit, a word inside your spirit. When God puts a seed of his word inside you. When God calls you to destiny. When God calls you to the future. When God calls you to his plans and his purposes. I want to say this to you. It's never too late. It's never too late. You can be 75, 85, 95. It's never too late for God to begin a work inside of you. To lead you to a place that you've never been led in your life before. Because you don't know where you're going. It doesn't matter. God just believe God. I believe God is waiting for the church. He's waiting for us to respond. He's waiting for us to step out of our comfort zone. He's waiting for us to depart the departures line, to get on the airplane and to fly to the place that he's going to lead us and come to the checking gate at arrivals. And when we get to the arrivals, we place, find that place of destiny and, and, and we see a multitude and a multitude and a multitude of people following because we've been obedient to the word of God. Because Abraham would have never seen fulfillment unless he went on the journey, believed God every step of the way, every step of the way, every step of the way, until he finds himself standing with a multitude upon a multitude upon a multitude of a family on earth, in heaven, worldwide. This man, God's word fulfilled. It is like the world is waiting for you, my friend. The world is waiting for you, my friend. Right here, right now, church, God is calling you. It's never too late. All we got to do, Abraham, believe God. Believe God. Believe God. Believe God for what he has spoken over your life. Believe God for the seed that he's planted with you. Believe God that he is going to lead you into the future. Because I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. It's plan to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans for a hope and a future. In Jesus' name, Amen and amen. And if you're not encouraged this morning, I want to pray for you. I want to, I want, I want to pray for you right now that God will release a, a spirit of faith inside of you, that your faith will be activated this morning and that you will release that in Jesus' name and see the fulfillment of God's plan. Abraham, believe God. Believe God, my friend. Believe God and you will see fulfillment in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And maybe you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you do not know God as your friend, as Abraham was called God's friend. Maybe you do not know that you've never been on a journey with God. Well, yes, your opportunity. All you've got to do is you've got to surrender your life to Christ. You've got to open your life to Jesus. You've got to give your life to Him. You've got to confess your sin to Him. You've got to say, I'm sorry. You've got to ask God for you for forgiveness. And then you've got to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior of your life. You do that by praying a prayer like this. Lord, Father God, I come before you right now. In your presence, here I am in your midst. Right, you are with me right now. Right now, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I acknowledge to you that I'm a sinner. And I'm sorry for all the sins that I've ever committed. And right now, I acknowledge too that you sent your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for my sin and to forgive me for my sinfulness. And right now, I confess that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of my life. And I invite Jesus to take charge of my life. All Take all that I am and all that I have, and I give every aspect of me to you today. Come, send your Holy Spirit to breathe upon me so that I can be born again. And I ask this today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, and we will see you next time. And I pray that you will believe God in Jesus' name over the circumstances that you find yourself in right here, right now. Amen and amen. Bye-bye. If you made a decision today with Pastor John, you prayed that prayer, you've made that choice to give your life to Jesus, well done. This is the best decision of your whole life and it puts you on a different pathway. We want to journey with you on that process because we want to help you grow to your next and just partner with you in this process. For that to happen, please WhatsApp hi to the number below so that we can make contact with you or pop on over to Information Central and go to the option New Believer and then that'll take you through the process. Plus, 
we have a really free resource for you on Information Central. Stick around, we've got another message just for you, especially for you, that Jade is going to bring a little bit later on. Hey friend, good to see you again. Um, I want to say thank you uh, on behalf of the leadership to you for your generosity. Um, you know, it's, it's because of your generosity that it enables us as a church to support those of us in our communities who are in need at this desperate time. And as I'm sure you can imagine, uh, during the COVID times, uh, there are many, many people in need. Uh, we, we try to support our community in two ways, amongst others. Um, one of them is, is through food. We provide food hampers uh, to those um, who are destitute and in need in our community. And we also provide friendships. So we, we give people an opportunity who might feel isolated or alone at this time uh, to connect with other like-minded people um, through online small groups. So thank you for your generosity. I mean, it enables us to do just that. And as I was thinking about um, being generous, um, I, was, I was obviously going through uh, some things. I was looking at church online. And if you're watching this, that means that you are reasonably active online um, through various social media platforms and so forth. And one of the things I came across was the fact that it amazes me that there are so many people who are punting get quick, get rich quick rather. Um, and I was thinking about, you know, which, which, which fad should you follow? Which trend you should follow? And I kind of got into, well, you should probably go to those who are experts. Um, for those of you who may be familiar with the stories, uh, some of the names I've men that I'm mentioning, um, guys like Jeff Bezos or, or Warren Buffett, these guys are, 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 are giants in the investment industry, um, in the world, some of the most richest men in the world. And I guess there may be some people who suggest that you follow them. Um, but then I got myself thinking, you know, maybe, maybe to go one step further, if you want to understand from an expert, why don't you go to the expert of experts? And I want to turn your attention to what the scriptures say about how to live a blessed life. And I'm reading to you from Proverbs 11, uh, verse 25 in the Passion Translation, and it, and it simply reads as follows. Those who love to bless others will have blessings heaped upon them. And the one who pours out his life to pour out blessings will be saturated with favor. And if you ever needed a simple recipe on how to live a blessed life, the Bible is very clear. The way to live a blessed life is to give. So we want to give you the opportunity now to continue to be generous and to continue to give. There will be a number coming up on the screen and there are many, many ways that you can give. Why don't you take the opportunity now to give? Thank you for your generosity. And if you're one of those people who are, who are you know, destitute or in need of some help, why don't you take the opportunity to WhatsApp the number, uh, WhatsApp high rather, to the number on the screen uh, below, or get, get in contact with us uh, through Information Central right here on Facebook. God bless. Hey friend, it's my privilege and honor to, to stand with you and with many others who are believing and trusting God for some breakthroughs in their lives. You know, um, every week we have people submitting prayer requests here, right, um, on our Facebook platform through Information Central. Um, if you have a unique challenge or facing some difficulty, we have people waiting in the wings, ready to stand with you and trust and believe that God's going to come through for you, with you as well. So if you'd like to, uh, you can simply go over to our Facebook page, as I said previously, or you can WhatsApp hi to the number on the screen below, or even better, um, you'll, you'll see now in the comment section, um, as we are watching this online uh, church service, there are people who, are, who you are able to chat with and you can simply uh, chat with them and let them know about your prayer request. Before we jump into the prayer request, we have some people who would like to give a praise report. This is what we do when we say thank you to God for, for answered prayers. And some people are saying thank you because um, they have a job. Other people are saying thank you because God provided some food during the week. And uh, another businessman thanking God for his business opportunity that came through um, this past week. And you may have some people who are trusting God for healing. Um, some of the people in our community are trusting God for, uh, for, for the children's protection as they return to school this week. And then some people asking God for, for some breakthrough in their finances. 
And I'm sure there are many, many people who are, who are listening right now, who are watching this video, who are trusting and believing for some, for some breakthrough of God to move. And I want to read and encourage you um, from Matthew chapter 7 in the Passion Translation. And Jesus is speaking and he's teaching and he says, If you, imperfect as you are, know how to lovingly take care of your children and give them what's best, how much more ready is your Heavenly Father to give wonderful gifts to those who ask Him? So the Bible is very specific. All we need to do is ask. So why don't you stand with me now as I stand with you and we believe together or with God for your breakthrough. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that you say in your word that you are a loving Heavenly Father. And as parents, as, as mothers, as fathers, we are motivated to do the best for our kids, to give them gifts, to, to lovingly look after them. And if we are imperfect, Lord God, how much more you, the perfect loving father how much more willing are you that you would be able to give good gifts to those who simply ask and so we come very simply this morning Lord god and i i represent all of those people who are watching this video um, watching this online service and i represent the many many requests and i simply come and ask that you would break through in individuals lives father where healing is needed where finance is needed where, whatever the need is lord i pray that you break through and show yourself as we know you are in Jesus' name, Amen. God bless. Small groups are all about doing life together and really form the heart and soul of our church. If you're not connected to our online small group community, you're missing out. So why not head on over to Information Central on our Facebook page and get plugged in. If you've responded to Jesus today, we'd love to connect with you and help you grow to your next. The process is super simple. Step one, SMS the word hi to the WhatsApp number that appears on your screen or visit Information Central on our Facebook page. Alternatively, you can log on to www.acitychurch.coza where you'll find a free downloadable resource. Don't forget to leave your contact details so that we can get in touch with you. Step two, Register for GrowTrack. GrowTrack is an excellent online course that is aimed at helping you discover your purpose and live your best life. GrowTrack covers four key components. Know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. So head on over to Info Central today and sign up. Step three is all about connecting you with the spiritual family who want to care for you, pray with you and support you. We have an online small group just for you. Don't forget that you can catch today's preach on YouTube. So enjoy. And why not forward the link onto someone else who would value the encouragement too. We'll be starting an exciting online course tomorrow and would love for you to sign up. Over to Reds, who will unpack the course in greater detail. Path is a discipleship program designed to help you understand the beautiful foundations of the Christian faith. But maybe you're not a Christian, but you're just interested to find out what is this worldview that a lot of people follow. Or maybe you're a new Christian who wants to understand uh, more in-depth concepts and how to communicate the Christian faith with those around you. Well, that's Pathway. It's happening right here at A City for four weeks straight every Monday. And all you need to do is go onto Information Central, register, sign up for Pathway, and we'll see you there.